I want you to think for a moment about a memory that you shared with your grandparents that still lives within you even today. Something that inspires you and motivates you, shaped who you are, and also shapes God willing who you hope to be in the future and to plant in future generations. I want to talk for a few moments about the power of parents, grandparents, and children, and the notion of Jewish continuity. Because out of all of the Torah portions that we read, this is the one that focuses on intergenerational connection. The name of the Torah portion this week is called Toldot, which means generations. And the question obviously is why this particular part do we focus on those generational connections, continuity? There are other times in the Torah, earlier when people were born, and certainly later when people were born as well. Rabbi Moshe Wolfson offers an inspiring idea. He says this is the only Torah portion in which at the same time you have living Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's for a short amount of time, but we know at the very beginning of the Torah portion, Jacob is born, and when he is 15 years old, that's actually when his grandfather, Abraham, passes away. And he believes that when they were together, there was a conversation, there was an engagement. Can you imagine what's going around at that Thanksgiving table, Abraham speaking to Yitzchak, speaking to Yaakov? And that's why this Torah portion is about continuity. Because oftentimes we think about it being one generational, but Judaism is telling us it's so important for children and grandchildren, multiple conversations to be happening across time. It's actually a promise that we are given. Every morning we say a prayer and we hope and pray that if we instill our lives with the messages of the previous generations, God willing, it will go from one generation to another generation and it will be something which is eternal. We live at a time which is certainly very challenging challenging to maintain continuity. The value is the reason why we're here, and we think even study the Torah, and think about what's important, is only because previous generations have invested in us, and it's our responsibility to try to have those conversations and make sure that we do our best to maintain that faith for future generations. I want to share three brief stories that I think about with my own grandparents and parents. One I remember, I'll never forget this moment, I was a young boy, in the 1970s in Atlanta where I grew up, my father was the assistant rabbi Beth Jacob. And I still remember to this day, my grandfather, my mother's father, Harry Umansky of blessed memory, taking me out to fly a new kite, a new kite that I had just gotten. And I remember the joy, I remember the love. I remember seeing if I could get that kite to go so high that it disappeared into the clouds. It was a moment in time, a moment shared, but it gave me a sense of an eternal love that I've never forgotten. It also reminded me even today that sometimes we may not see God. I think about it as an older person, but we can feel God's tug. The second memory is something that I felt just recently. I've taught my grandson one of the things that my father, Rabbi Herbert Cohen, taught me, and that's what Torah power is about. I remember growing up in Atlanta, and it was hot, and there were hills that were there, And I couldn't walk the shoal. It was hard. And my father would say to me, Torah power. He would hold on to my hands and he would push me up the hill. And that little thing, just by saying Torah power, gave me the sense that Torah and strength and inspiration brings me further. I taught that to my kids growing up, you know, and it's not always easy to walk the shoal. I go, Torah power. And now, thank God. And we should all have the ability with a grandchild holding his hand. And he says to me, Torah power. And I think about four generations and a memory that's created. Something that makes me feel deeply connected inside and something for all of us to think about what are those memories that we're creating from generation to generation. And finally, one other story that I think about as well, and that is in terms of the conversations that we can have. God willing, and it might be harder with the COVID, we sit around a table on Shabbat, we sit around a table at Thanksgiving. So important to go if we have grandparents that are living to speak to them and to say to them, Tell me what it was like when you were growing up. Why is perpetuating Judaism important to you? Share some memories and then share those with future generations. We actually have at our home, my grandfather on my father's side was a World War II veteran. He served in the Navy. I have his uniform. And we take that out at the Thanksgiving meal to talk about what America means to us, the sacrifices that he made. So our children and grandchildren appreciate the blessings of this country. 
I also take out a letter that my grandmother of blessed memory, my mother's mother wrote on the anniversary of the Statue of Liberty. She wrote to each of the grandchildren. She came as an immigrant from Russia in the early 1900s and talked about how blessed we are to have the freedoms that are here. Those conversations, those conversations are so important to create continuity. Just want to conclude with a bracha, with a blessing. Right, Moshe Wolfson points out that it's no coincidence of the intergenerational connection is the first Shabbat of Kislev. In a few weeks from now, we're going to celebrate the holiday of Hanukkah. Hanukkah is not purely just lighting candles, but Hanukkah is about standing for what we believe in. When a time when there was such rampant assimilation at the time when the Greeks wanted to Hellenize the Jews, and the Jews said, you know what? Judaism is worth fighting for. Freedom of religion is worth fighting for. Celebrating Shabbat is worth fighting for. Studying Torah is worth fighting for, and so many other. And the strength that we get is when we can connect to previous generations and understand that there, by the grace of not only God, but their investments, are we here. They gave us a task, and it's our responsibility to ensure the perpetuation of the Jewish people so for the souls yet unborn, they understand that we're part of one transcendent conversation beginning at Sinai, to instill the world with righteousness, justice, and love, and bring blessing to all the families of the earth. Let's have those conversations in the weeks ahead. Let's create so many intergenerational connections. Let's thank our grandparents and parents for what they've done for us, and let's make sure we have these conversations, God willing, across those generations for many, many years to come. Shabbat Shalom, an early happy Hanukkah, and God willing, we'll have conversations across time for many, many years.